Wes here, Project Performance. So we got a quick video here we put together. It's a common question, one I had a theory on, and you may too. Regearing your Jeep Wrangler. What do you gain? What do you lose? Is it what you feel? Is it what you get? What is the reality of what's going on? So in this video today, we got a 2012 Wrangler. Um, I'm not sure, four or five inches to lift, something like that. We got 37 inch tires. We did a baseline dyno video I think it's been about a week or so now uh, regarding, you know, we're going to be turbocharging it. So let's just put it as is on the dyno, make a pull, see what it does, get a nice graph. Then we're going to turbocharge it, make another graph, and put them all over. Um, this vehicle has 37 inch tires, 321 gears. So we said, really, in the end, it needs to be re geared. Why don't we just do the gear first and make a simple video for our fellow Jeep friends out there to say, hey, if I just add gear, am I gonna gain horsepower, lose horsepower, you know, and answer those questions we went over. So, I'll show you this, this here, and then we'll talk a little bit about, um, you know, re-gearing and different applications, whether it's naturally aspirated and turbocharged, even supercharged for you other guys out there. And let's go through a few things, but it's gonna be a good one, so stay tuned. So what we got here, we got horsepower and we got torque. Our green line was the baseline we took. Good run, vehicles all stock, 321 gears, okay? The, if you'll notice, some of the lines have dots, some of the lines are straight. These two lines are straight. This is horsepower, it's gonna come from this axis. And the ones with the little dots on them, those are torque numbers, they're gonna come from this axis over here. So the green was our baseline run. The pink was the one we just did a minute ago, and you can see it's pretty inconclusive. We may have lost a little bit here, may have gained a little bit here, lost it over here. Same thing with our horsepower. You know, we were pretty much looking the same and crawled over the top a little bit, and then it went back down. This is going to be um, a li little bit more than what you would normally see if we just continue to run the vehicle, right? So if we just made, you know, run two to run 10, that type of thing. So the answer question for me was, really doesn't do much. It's gonna do much for you as a driver because it's gonna create a different experience. Torque and the, and the power's gonna come in sooner, the higher the gear ratio we go up. And the drawback to that is on the highway, we're now gonna be cruising final gear higher RPMs, so naturally a loss of fuel economy on the highway, better around town performance. A common thing that I see with naturally aspirated Jeeps, guys get a Jeep, they start modifying it, and then they say, hey, uh, you know, I got my fenders, I got my bumpers, I'm gonna put my wheels and tires, and they drive it for a week, and they're like, this thing drives terrible. Well, we changed the gear ratio tremendously by changing the diameter of the tire. We not only did we change the diameter of the tire, but you also change the weight of it. So everything we add costs us performance, especially you know unsprung weight, we call it. Uh, weight that's not lifted by the vehicle or held by the weight of the suspension. These are gonna be our drivetrain uh, parasites. 37 inch tire, you know, stock one, I'm not sure, 50 pounds, 60 pounds, whatever it is. This guy's buck 25, buck 50 or something like that. You went ahead and you, and you, you, you said, okay, you went back to your, your shop, you know, your four wheel drive shop, you said, hey, the, the performance is pretty much gone, what can I do? They make a common recommendation for you. They say, hey, uh, let's do re-gear because it's natural with the tires. They're right. But maybe the recommendation next is not the best. So as the recommendation goes, the one that's going to feel the best in their experience and yours too will be, you know, we put a 513 gear, we put a 538, you know, we put these really high ratio gears and they're going to accelerate. So they're going to have a, a, a magnified feeling of drivability from the start and round town, that type of thing. And depending on how much driving the end user does, it's going to, you know, they're going to see the end results of the overall um, increase in tachometer speed as the vehicle is driving at a higher speed on the highway. Um, the gear selection is a very important one. Another thing I find that after people have spent the money to make this modification, a gear change, you know, they're, they're all in there. Now, it's the, now we're talking about a good size investment. They think the gear change is a solution to 
their lack of power problem and they find out later it helped it didn't solve or make it everything they wanted it to be and it certainly doesn't perform as good as they just made it look so now we may be in a situation where the customer has you know decided to over gear the vehicle and when we pick a turbocharger we want less gear and even when you pick a supercharger if that's what you, you, you did you may find yourself in a situation where it's over geared meaning if we're doing you know we're highway speed and now i'm the user that wants that lives in texas or florida and i want to travel at you know a highway speed of 80 miles per hour depending on the gear i chose we might be over 3,000 rpms so if we have a turbo system that spools you know good amount of boost at 2800 rpms and you're trying to travel at 3000 rpms so we're now in a situation where we're getting this feeling where you know the vehicle is and then we let out the throttle and then it, because of the speed of the engine and the load which it wants to do it again and you'll get into this you know surge type you know i can't maintain the stock speed type of issue i've seen it before We'll comment on the supercharger stuff, but I've seen it before there. If we've overgeared it, now we're spinning the supercharger at such a high rate of speed, it wants to process a lot of air. But the throttle blades close because you're just trying to cruise, you're not trying to, you know, accelerate, and it's still trying to process all of this air, right? But the throttle blades close, so now it has to bypass the air. They use a bypass valve. Some of these superchargers, it's only like, you know, it's like this big on the bypass valve. So the supercharger spun up 3,000 plus RPMs on the engine, supercharger speed's high, and it has to purge this air. Now it's gonna make your throttle on the highway like twitchy. So as soon as you tap into it, you know, it's gonna be That's a bit you try to use the cruise control. I've seen this issue all the time. You know, I got this cruise control issue, and we blame it on the supercharger, we blame it on the tune. The, the root cause for a lot of people could be I overgeared the vehicle. So we got to pick it, it, the best case scenario is if you can pick the the overall purpose for the vehicle earlier the better because sometimes you know it's it's hard enough decision to spend a couple thousand dollars re-gearing the vehicle to begin with but to do it twice it could be painful so yeah we can see this here uh, if you would you know keep some put some comments down in the video shoot us an email something else you want to see some some theories we got the dyno we got the facility um, you know, we want to try to keep an unbiased approach here and would really like to, to see some more interaction in 2019 and, uh, you know, show our skills more, show what we got, help guys prove or disprove theories they may have. Please, we would utilize us. Thanks for watching. We appreciate all y'all. Looking forward to a great 2019 from West Project Performance.